Question. A client with chronic renal failure who receives hemodialysis three times a week is experiencing severe nausea. The nurse should educate the client to do to manage nausea. Select all that apply. 1. Drink fluids before eating solid foods. 2. Have limited amounts of fluids only when thirsty. 3. Keep all dialysis appointments. 4. Eat smaller, more frequent meals. 5. Limit activity. Answer. Option 2, 3, and 4 are correct. To manage nausea, the nurse should educate the client to drink limited amounts of fluid only when thirsty, eat food before drinking fluids to alleviate dry mouth, encourage strict follow-up for blood work, dialysis, and healthcare provider visits. Smaller, more frequent meals may help to reduce nausea and facilitate medication taking. The client should be as active as possible to avoid immobilization because it increases bone demineralization. The client should also maintain the dialysis schedule because the dialysis will remove wastes that can contribute to nausea. Question. A client receives hemodialysis three times a week for his chronic renal failure. To protect the fistula, the nurse should. 1. Take the blood pressure in the arm proximal with the fistula. 2. Report the loss of a thrill or brute on the arm with the fistula. 3. Start a second IV in the arm with the fistula. 4. Auscultate for a thrill and palpate for a brute on the arm with the fistula. Answer. Option 4 is correct. The nurse must always palpate for a thrill and auscultate for a brute in the arm with the fistula and promptly report the absence of either or a thrill or brute to the healthcare provider as it indicates an occlusion. No procedures such as IV access, blood pressure measurements, or blood draws are done on an arm with a fistula as they could damage the fistula. Question. The nurse should assess a client with continuous ambulatory peridoneal dialysis for which of the following signs of peridoneal infection. 1. Redness at the catheter insertion site. 2. Cloudy dialysate fluid. 3. Edema in the legs. 4. Poor drainage of the dialysate fluid. Answer. Option 2 is correct. Cloudy drainage indicates bacterial activity in the peritoneum. Other signs and symptoms of infection are fever, hyperactive bowel sounds, and abdominal pain. Edema of legs may indicate heart failure. Poor drainage of dialysate fluid is probably the result of a kinked catheter. Redness at the insertion site indicates local infection, not peritonitis. However, a local infection that is left untreated can progress to the peritoneum. Question. What is the reason why the dialysis solution is warmed before using in peritoneal dialysis? 1. Promote abdominal muscle relaxation. 2. Encourage the removal of serum urea. 3. Force potassium back into the cells. 4. Add extra warmth to the body. Answer. Option 2 is correct. The main reason for warming the peritoneal dialysis solution is that the warm solution helps dilate peritoneal vessels, which increases urea clearance. Warmed dialysing solution also provides comfort to a client by preventing chilly sensations, but this is a secondary reason for warming the solution. The warm solution does not force potassium into the cells or promote abdominal muscle relaxation. Question. While the client is on dialysis, the nurse observes that the solution draining from the abdomen is consistently blood-tinged. The client has a permanent peritoneal catheter in place. The nurse should analyze that the bleeding. 1. Expected with a permanent peritoneal catheter. 2. Can indicate kidney damage. 3. Is caused by too rapid infusion of the dialysate. 4. Indicates abdominal blood vessel damage. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Because the client has a permanent catheter in place, blood-tinged drainage should not occur. Persistent blood-tinged drainage could indicate damage to the abdominal vessels, and the physician should be notified. The bleeding is originating in the peritoneal cavity, not the kidneys. Rapid infusion of the dialysate can cause pain, not blood-tinged drainage. Question. Which following assessments would be most appropriate for the nurse to make while the dialysis solution is dwelling within the client's abdomen? 1. Observe respiratory status. 2. 
Check forward area. 3. Check capillary refill time. 4. Monitor electrolyte status. Answer. Option 1 is correct. During dwell time, the dialysis solution is allowed to remain in the peritoneal cavity for the time prescribed by the physician, usually 20 to 45 minutes. During this time, the nurse should monitor the client's respiratory status, because the pressure of the dialysis solution on the diaphragm can create respiratory distress. The dialysis solution would not cause urticaria or affect circulation to the fingers. The client's laboratory values are obtained before beginning treatment and are monitored every 4 to 8 hours during the treatment, not just during the dwell time. Question. A client undergoing long-term peritoneal dialysis at home is currently experiencing a reduced outflow from the dialysis catheter. To know if the catheter is obstructed, the nurse should inquire whether the client has 1. Constipation 2. Diarrhea 3. Vomiting 4. Flatulence Answer. Option 1 is correct. Constipation may contribute to reduced urine outflow in part because peristalsis facilitates drainage outflow. Bicycle suppositories can be used prophylactically, even without a history of constipation. Diarrhea, vomiting, and flatulence typically do not cause decreased outflow in a peritoneal dialysis catheter. Question. During dialysis, the nurse observes that the flow of dialysate stops before all the solution has drained out. The nurse priority action should. 1. Have the client sit in a chair. 2. Reposition the peritoneal catheter. 3. Turn the client from side to side. 4. Have the client walk. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Fluid return with peritoneal dialysis is accomplished by gravity flow. Actions that enhance gravity flow include turning the client from side to side, raising the head of the bed, and gently massaging the abdomen. The client is usually confined to a recumbent position during the dialysis. The nurse should avoid to reposition the catheter. Question. Which intervention should be included in the plans of care for a client during dialysis therapy? 1. Limit the client's visitors. 2. Pad the side rails of the bed. 3. Keep the client on nothing by mouth status. 4. Monitor the client's blood pressure. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Because low blood pressure is a complication associated with peritoneal dialysis, the nurse records intake and output, monitors vital signs, and observes the client's behavior. The nurse also encourages visiting and other diversional activities. A client on peritoneal dialysis does not need to be placed in a bed with padded side rails or kept on NPO status. Question. The physician prescribed aluminum hydroxide gel, amphigel, to a client with chronic renal failure to be taken at home. What is the expected outcome of giving this drug? 1. Binding phosphate in the intestine. 2. Relieving the pain of gastric hyperacidity. 3. Preventing curling stress ulcers. 4. Reversing metabolic acidosis. Answer. Option 1 is correct. A client in renal failure develops hyperphosphatemia that causes a corresponding excretion of the body's calcium stores, leading to renal osteodystrophy. To decrease this loss, aluminum hydroxide gel is prescribed to bind phosphates in the intestine and facilitate their excretion. Gastric hyperacidity is not necessarily a problem associated with chronic renal failure. Antacids will not stop curling stress ulcers and do not affect metabolic acidosis. Question. What should the nurse teach to a client performing self-peritoneal dialysis to prevent peritonitis? Select all that apply. 1. Clean technique is permissible for prevention of peritonitis. 2. Broad-spectrum antibiotics may be administered to prevent infection. 3. Antibiotics may be added to the dialysate to treat peritonitis. 4. Peritonitis is characterized by cloudy dialysate drainage and abdominal discomfort. 5. Peritonitis is the most common and serious complication of peritoneal dialysis. Answer. Options 2, 3, 4 and 5 are correct. Broad-spectrum antibiotics may be administered to prevent infection when a peritoneal catheter is inserted for peritoneal dialysis. If peritonitis is present, antibiotics may be added to the dialysate. 
a septic technique is imperative. Peritonitis, the most common serious complication of peritoneal dialysis is characterized by cloudy dialysate drainage, diffuse abdominal pain, and rebound tenderness. Question. The client with chronic renal failure takes magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesia, for constipation. The nurse suggests that the client switch to psyllium hydrophilic mucilloid, metamucil, because 1. Milk of magnesia is too harsh on the bowel. 2. Metamucil is more palatable. 3. Milk of magnesia can cause magnesium intoxication. 4. Milk of magnesia is high in sodium. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Magnesium is excreted by the kidneys. When the kidneys fail, magnesium can accumulate and cause severe neurologic problems. Milk of magnesia is harsher than metamucil, but magnesium toxicity is a more serious problem. A client may find both milk of magnesia and metamucil unpalatable. Milk of magnesia is not high in sodium. Question. The nurse is discussing concerns about sexual activity with a client with chronic renal failure. Which one of the following strategies would be most useful? 1. Help the client to accept that sexual activity will be decreased. 2. Tell the client to plan rest periods after sexual activity. 3. Suggest using alternative forms of sexual expression and intimacy. 4. The client should avoid sexual activity to prevent embarrassment. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Altered sexual functioning commonly occurs in chronic renal failure and can stress marriages and relationships. Altered sexual functioning can be caused by decreased hormone levels, anemia, peripheral neuropathy, or medication. The client should not decrease or avoid sexual activity but instead should modify it. The client should rest before sexual activity. Question. A client with chronic renal failure has asked to be evaluated for a home, continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis program. The nurse should explain to the clients that the major advantage of this approach is that it 1. is faster and more efficient than standard peritoneal dialysis. 2. has fewer potential complications than standard peritoneal dialysis. 3. is relatively low in cost. 4. Allows the client to be more independent. Answer. Option 4 is correct. The major benefit of CAPD is that it frees the client from daily dependence on dialysis centers, healthcare personnel, and machines for life sustaining treatment. This independence is a valuable outcome for some people. CAPD is expensive and must be done daily. Adverse effects and complications are similar to those of standard peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis usually takes less time, but cannot be done at home. Question. Which diets would be appropriate for a client with chronic renal failure? 1. Low protein, high potassium. 2. High carbohydrate, high protein. 3. High calcium, high potassium, high protein. 4. Low protein, low sodium, low potassium. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Dietary management for clients with chronic renal failure is usually designed to restrict protein, sodium, and potassium intake. Protein intake is reduced because the kidney can no longer excrete the byproducts of protein metabolism. The degree of dietary restriction depends on the degree of renal impairment. The client should receive a high-carbohydrate diet, along with appropriate vitamin and mineral supplements. Calcium requirements remain 1,000 to 2,000 mg per day. Question. The nurse is planning which teaching approaches for the client with chronic renal failure and uremia would be most appropriate. The nurse should 1. Provide all required teaching in one extended session. 2. Conduct a one-on-one -on -one session with the client. 3. Use videotapes to reinforce the material as needed. 4. Validate the client's understanding of the material frequently. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Uremia can cause decreased alertness, so the nurse needs to validate the client's comprehension frequently. Because the client's ability to concentrate is limited, short lessons are most effective. If family members are present at the sessions, they can reinforce the material. 
written materials that the client can review are superior to videotapes because clients may not be able to maintain alertness during the viewing of the videotape. Question. The nurse teaches the client with chronic renal failure when to take aluminum hydroxide gel, amphigel. Which of the following statements would indicate that the client understands the health teaching? 1. I'll take it every 6 hours around the clock. 2. I'll take it between meals and at bedtime. 3. I'll take it with meals and bedtime snacks. 4. I'll take it when I have an upset stomach. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Aluminum hydroxide gel, amphigel, is administered to bind the phosphates in ingested foods and must be given with or immediately after meals and snacks. There is no need for the client to take it on a 24-hour schedule. It is not administered to treat an upset stomach caused by hyperacidity in clients with chronic renal failure and therefore is not prescribed between meals. Question. Right after peridoneal dialysis, the nurse should assess the client for which of the following? 1. Hematuria. 2. Hypertension. 3. Weight loss. 4. Increased urine output. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Weight loss is expected because of the removal of fluid. The client's weight before and after dialysis is one measure of the effectiveness of treatment. Blood pressure usually decreases because of the removal of fluid. Hematuria would not occur after completion of peridoneal dialysis. Dialysis minimally affects the damaged kidney's ability to manufacture urine. Question. The client asks about diet changes when using continuous ambulatory peridoneal dialysis. Which statement is the best response by the nurse? 1. Diet restrictions with CAP, D are fewer than with standard peridoneal dialysis because dialysis is constant. 2. Diet restrictions are more rigid with CAPD because standard peridoneal dialysis is a more effective technique. 3. Diet restrictions are the same for both CA, PD and standard peridoneal dialysis. 4. Diet restrictions with CAPD are fewer than with standard peridoneal dialysis because CAPD works more quickly. Answer. Option 1 is correct. Dietary restrictions with CAPD are fewer than those with standard peridoneal dialysis because dialysis is constant, not intermittent. The constant slow diffusion of CAPD helps prevent accumulation of toxins and allows for a more liberal diet. CAPD does not work quickly, but more consistently. Both types of peridoneal dialysis are effective. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and watch playlist for more videos.